Boy, Finn McKinty sure did upset metal Twitter this week. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Riff of the Week. And in case you missed it, this week, an innocent series of tweets, or maybe it wasn't so innocent, we'll see, set off a big controversy on Metal Twitter. So let's just jump right into it. Finn McKinty quote tweeted this person that tweeted the following. This might sound insane, but I feel like there's a conspiracy against mainstream rock slash heavier music. I never hear heavy bands on the radio. It's the same terrible rap slash pop bullshit. And you cannot tell me that people don't enjoy heavier music because the 90s slash 2000s were full of it. New Age music is so soulless and repetitive, it turns your brain into Swiss cheese. Now, I don't think anybody would write a tweet like that and expect it to go viral, but half a million views later, helped in no small part by Finn McQuinty quote tweeting it and saying the following. There's no conspiracy. Gent killed metal. No songs just riffs, and there are no larger-than-life stars like Fred Durst. Every band looks like a bunch of baristas who are scared to offend anyone. All right, I, I know Metal Twitter's not going to like this, but in broad strokes, Finn is actually right on this one. Why are you pulling me? I'm right. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got some major disagreements with this take that I'm going to get at later in the episode, but again, in broad strokes, in general terms, he's actually right on this one. It's just there's some nuance to it that you're just not going to get out of something so short as a tweet. So after all the controversy, Finn released a response video on his YouTube channel and kind of went more into detail on what he meant. Now, when I watched that video, there was some stuff there that I felt like really made his case, but also there's some stuff that I really disagree with. So we're gonna cover that here. So first let's address Gent Killed Metal. Obviously metal isn't dead. Those of you that have been subscribed for a long time, you've seen me cover all the new album releases every week here. It's easily the best time ever to be a metalhead. Death metal is going through a renaissance period. So no, it's not dead, but I don't think that's what Finn meant. And he went on to clarify in that video, it's not that metal is dead, it's that it's not as popular as it was in the 90s and the 2000s. And that's inarguably true. The days of Korn and Metallica and Linkin Park being the most popular bands and sharing space in the mainstream with other big acts, other pop and rap acts, those days are over. But Gent didn't do that. Gent may have made metalcore become stale and formulaic, but all the other genres of metal are completely unaffected. Death metal, thrash metal, hardcore, none of those have Gent influences, and so it's not really an issue. Then he said, there's no larger than life rock stars like Fred Durst. Now, if I just ignore what a dad rock boomery thing it is to use Fred Durst as your example of a big rock star, if I just put that to the side, again, he's right. I don't know if he chose Fred Durst as his example because he knew it would sound outrageous and drive more engagement, but the point stands. Who are the big rock stars today? Do y'all remember Axl Rose? Back in the 90s, Axl Rose was the newest, young, and arguably the biggest rock star in the world. But even Axl Rose isn't Axl Rose anymore. Back then, he was the archetypal rock star. He was always involved in some sort of controversy. You never knew what he was going to do. If you bought tickets to a Guns N' Roses show, you never knew if he was going to show up late, if he even showed up at all. Maybe he gets on a tirade on the mic instead of actually performing. You never knew. It was crazy. But ever since Guns N' Roses reunited with their original lineup, He's been a consummate professional. You never hear about him being late or canceling shows. He always does the job. Even if his leg is broken, he's staying out of the media. He just shows up, 
does the job and goes home. So with that Axl Rose archetype in mind, who is today's big rock star? Once again, Finn McKinty is right. The only big rock star right now is Machine Gun Kelly. Now, I don't like MGK's music, so it's easy for me to ignore him. It's easy for me to write him off and roll my eyes when you say something like that. But objectively, the fact of the matter is, nobody in rock has gotten the sort of mainstream attention and notoriety that MGK got last year. It's just a fact. So again, with that example in mind and that level of mainstream attention, who are the big rock stars today and they have to be under 40 years old? Then Finn closes the tweet saying that all these bands look like baristas who are scared to offend anyone. And this is where I disagree with Finn because I've heard this before. I've seen this same thing before. Back in the early 90s when grunge was taken off, all the old heads back then would say, these guys all look like lumberjacks and homeless people. They don't look like rock stars anymore. That's that same boomer energy. I do think there's one point to be made here though. Musicians nowadays do go out of their way to not offend anyone. Nobody wants to offend anyone. And it's not just musicians, it's people in general. And that's because of social media. Because nobody wants to get noticed by the eye of Sauron and then dragged online and subsequently dogpiled. So, that's the tweet, and that caused all that controversy on Twitter with over a hundred quote tweets and all kinds of comments and lots of subtweets that I saw. So Finn made a video to more explain himself, and this word gets a little bit more nuanced and interesting. So he went on in this video to explain exactly what I said earlier. He didn't really mean that metal's dead in a literal sense. He meant that it's not as popular as it used to be. But I would argue that the two peak eras of popularity for metal were an aberration. You've got the hair metal 80s and the new metal slash butt rock early 2000s. Those are the two peak areas of mainstream popularity for metal. And I don't think that that's the norm. I think that those were aberrations in society, but under normal circumstances, metal just isn't going to be a popular genre. We metalheads are drawn to extreme and abrasive music because we're not mainstream. We're not normies. The 80s were an insane and hedonistic time and music more generally, but also metal itself was a reflection of that time. And then when the new metal wave hit in the late 90s, well, that was rock trying to incorporate what has since become what is actually popular music, hip hop, into metal. I would argue that they kind of failed at that, but you know, that's a debate for another time. Also, new metal came in the heels of the late 90s, which the Matrix accurately said was the peak of human civilization, because that was the last time of relative peace and prosperity in the West. But it's not just that metal isn't as popular anymore. Finn then goes on in his video to lament that big rock stars are no longer being featured on the cover of mainstream magazines and TV shows. And here's where I really disagree with Finn because he goes on to show Fred Durst on the cover of Us Weekly magazine and say, look, this was a mainstream publication having Fred Durst on the cover. But here's the thing about that. Was Fred Durst on the cover of that magazine because Limp Biscuit was this huge mainstream act? No, he wasn't on there because he was in Limp Biscuit. He wasn't on there because of his music. He was on there because of the controversy involving him claiming that he had sexual relations with Britney Spears and actual pop star, an actual mainstream artist. If it weren't for Britney Spears, Fred Durst would not have been on the cover of that magazine. He then goes on to show uh, Pete Wentz on the cover of a big teenage magazine. Okay, yes, Pete Wentz was a huge star back then. Was, was Fall Out Boy metal? No, Fall Out Boy was pop punk. And there's a very important word in that genre description. Pop, punk. They weren't metal. That was a pop star. 
So really, even in Finn's heyday, metal wasn't as mainstream as he might remember if you use like magazine covers and the like as your metric. Now, with that being said, Finn does bring up a point that I wholeheartedly agree with. And I think it's the most important point in all of this that is unfortunately being overlooked. So the response to him on metal Twitter was often something to the effect of metal's not supposed to be mainstream. And you know, I've said that too. I agree with that point. But the point that Finn's making about Rock's waning popularity, we should be looking at that because we need rock and roll to be more popular and more financially feasible for the artists in order for metal to continue to survive. Rock and roll is what built the infrastructure that metal has used to thrive in. Unless you live in a big city, there aren't any dedicated extreme metal venues. If you live in a smaller market, like I do, and like probably most of you do, then there's a lot of rock and roll venues that sometimes have metal acts. And that's great. That gives us a place to have our scene. And Finn is right. If we want more music that we love, then being able to make a living making that music is the utmost importance. As much as I say that now's the best time ever to be a metalhead, at the same time, now may be the hardest time ever for a metal musician to make any money. And here a metal purist might say something like, well, it's not about the money, it's about the love of metal. And absolutely, it's not about the money. If it was about the money, then all of these musicians would play country instead. If it was about the money, then this YouTube channel would cover the weekend instead of extreme metal. But they do need to make some money because if they don't make any money, if you do it just for the love, eventually these musicians making these great albums, they're not going to be 25 anymore. They're going to be 35. They're going to be married. They're going to have kids, maybe a mortgage, and then they're going to need some money or they're going to quit making music. That's not good for the health of metal. And that's why I've been so vocal about merch cuts. And that's why when I do my weekend top five show, I always point to a band's band camp because they're not making any money off of Spotify. And that's why even though this is an extreme metal show, I'm constantly lamenting the state of rock and roll because this is important. Rappers and TikTok stars, they don't have to tour. They have other ways of making money. And if they do tour, they don't have a full band. They don't have to split the revenue of the shows four, five, six ways, depending on how big the band is. Our favorite bands have to tour in order to make it. So we really need to figure this merch cut situation out and get rid of it because we need the bands to be able to make some money. If we metalheads want to say things like, well, metal's not supposed to be mainstream. Well, that's fine. That's, I agree with that. But as a smaller market, we need to provide more support to these bands in order to make up for that smaller market than they would have gotten from being more mainstream. And that's why I buy so much merch. And that's why I push everybody to buy vinyl if you like a band, because we got to help out. But before we do the riff of the week, I want to hear from you. What do you think? Was Finn right? Was he wrong? What about me? Was I right or wrong? Did I miss something? Let me know. Put your thoughts in the comments. And if you're listening audio only, my social media links are in the description. You can hit me there. But this week's riff of the week is Kill Pop from Slipknot. Now, I don't necessarily think that Corey was talking about pop music when you look at the lyrics of this song, but I just love the title and it seems to fit the theme of today's show. So that's going to be this week's riff of the week. But while you're listening, remember, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you. Dying.